Thank you very much for inviting me uh, <clears throat> to make a presentation here on uh, attention deficit disorder. And I uh, uh, very much enjoyed uh, being here and talking to uh, some of the people I have been looking forward to meeting for many years on uh, other areas that I'll try to discuss today as well, which have to do with uh, some of the biological bases for ADHD uh, identified through imaging uh, studies. But um, I um, <clears throat> have the title here, and I'd like to um, try to touch bases on the uh, topics advertised in this title. Um, so I am going to try to cover uh, this uh, list of um, topics. <laughs> Uh, the diagnosis of ADHD, to follow up on <coughs> what we just heard about the, the, the changes that are coming for DSM-5, the effects of long-term treatment uh, in the 10-year now follow-up of the MTA study, which is ongoing and we're now uh, collecting information on the 16-year follow-up, or preparing to. Uh, <coughs> The trends in the use of stimulant medication for the treatment of ADHD in the United States, which are quite alarming. Uh, you might be seeing those trends here, but I don't know. But I thought I would share with you what is uh, happening in the United States currently. And then, uh, <clears throat> if I have time, uh, follow up with some of the effects that uh, we are now seeing in studies uh, using brain imaging on uh, the adult brain using uh, PET imaging as the methodology which, of course, is, uh, has a rich history here at the Karolinska. Uh, this is a, a book that was published by the American Psychiatric Association uh, several years ago in preparation for the changes that are uh, coming for DSM-5. Uh, I'd like to just call your attention to this title, Dimensional Approaches. I have a particular point of view on this that maybe isn't shared by the DSM-5 committee. But I thought I would present it because I do think there are some problems with uh, the revision uh, that's going to be used in DSM-5, as there are problems with DSM-4. Of course, there are problems with any diagnostic uh, classification system. We're always trying to improve it. So I'll give you a couple of ideas that uh, the group I work with has about how to prove, uh, improve diagnosis of attention deficit disorder. Uh, the categorical system is what <clears throat> is in place now in both DSM-4 and ICD-10. Uh, uh, if you look at the title of the book that was published a couple of years ago in preparation for DSM-5, <clears throat> you'll see the top that lists dimensional approaches as an alternative to a categorical diagnosis. The categorical diagnosis is just a symptom count diagnosis, and if you meet the criteria set now by DSM-4, it's a symptom counter, six or more of the symptoms of inattention and six or more of the symptoms of hyperactive impulsivity. Those are the symptoms. My mother read this and she said these are the symptoms of childhood. <laughs> she has 11 children. She said, no, I'm, I'm the favorite of the 11. <laughs> All of the 11 say that, so it's a, quite a debate. But <clears throat> these are, in some way, symptoms of childhood. And the symptom count based on subjective interview, usually with the parent, sometimes with the teacher, and uh, not often uh, too much of a detailed observation of a child, is the, 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 the way that this diagnosis is made. Very subjective. Uh, often fails to give close attention to details. Often has difficulty sustaining attention. If you read each one of these, uh, you might see what a teacher encounters when you ask these questions. Every single one of these things is bad. I work a lot with teachers. Teachers don't like that. They don't like to be asked just what's bad about a child. They want to be asked what's good about as well. So this is problematic, first of all, when you ask for ratings of teachers because the way it's presented. Uh, <clears throat> a dimensional adjunct, some might think, would uh, change this. Instead of looking at a category, a symptom count, you might look at a dimension of behavior. But actually, the dimensional characteristics of DSM-4 have not been uh, dimensional. Instead, they have been uh, assessment of symptom severity, where each one of the items listed in DSM-4 is uh, subjected to a rating. If you read what the typical rating might be, 
you're still asking each question as an instance of psychopathology. A child has a, does a child often have a hard time paying attention to detail? What's the first response you have in the typical rating scales that are used for assessing ADHD symptoms? Do you have this problem or not? If you say not at all, then you don't have the problem. If you say just a little, pretty much, very much, it's a degree of the, the symptom severity. But still, each item is listed as a problem. And this is typical rating scale. There are multiple versions of this. Actually, the first version of the DSM criteria for ADHD was uh, called the SNAP rating scale uh, of DSM-3. Uh, this is the SNAP-4. Uh, <clears throat> you can find this scale if you'd like to use it on the web at ADHD.net. Uh, it's free. You don't have to pay for an ADHD rating scale. Uh, I own the copyright and I also own the name. Uh, the website uh, or the name uh, www.adhd.net. I paid $12 for it <laughs> a long time ago. Uh, so if you want to get information on the rating scale, you can go there and download the scale. Uh, it is widely used and was used in the MTA uh, for the assessment of uh, symptom severity. But if you see, each symptom is rated now in terms of a degree of psychopathology. The first item, which you might not be able to read, often uh, fails to give close attention to detail is, do you have that problem or not? And then if you do, how much? And then you do that for each item. You score it 0, 1, 2, or 3 and add it up. and either take the total or better yet divide by the number of items and get a, a rating uh, over the scale zero to three. And a rating of over around two, quite a bit, is supposed to be diagnostic of attention deficit disorder. A typical cutoff is if you have it just a little bit, it is a symptom of childhood. So you have to have the symptom present to a degree uh, to make the diagnosis. However, I think I've come to believe that that's wrong too. Uh, this is a very opinionated lecture. I'm giving you my opinions on a lot of this. Uh, I don't, I'm not that negative. I'm not like the SM4 items. I'm negative on everything. It might sound like I am in my lecture today, but actually I'm not. It's just the title. Whoever came up with the title is making me talk about problems, I think. But the continuum of a behavior, I think, is a much better way to deal with the items of attention deficit disorder. These aren't necessarily symptoms of psychopathology. Now maybe in a place where there are a lot of psychiatrists, that's not a good thing to say. But I don't think these symptoms or the items for ADHD are necessarily symptoms of psychopathology. How do you dimensionalize the symptoms? Well, what I've done is ask each item in a different way. <clears throat> Instead of asking if there's a problem, for example, in the first one of paying attention to detail, you just ask, how does this child pay attention to detail? And then in a very common sense way, you say average. Some people say that's subjective, but so is not at all. And then better than average or not as good as average, worse. And the rating here, average, slightly above, below, uh, far above, or below is uh, the symptom, no longer a symptom, but the dimension of the underlying behavior of each one of these lists of items which are called symptoms in DSM-4. So now you don't ask, does this child have a problem with? You ask, how does this child do something? Teachers like this very much compared to the symptom rating. And actually, you get the same information and more. And I'll tell you, tell you a little bit about the more. But first of all, I'll tell you the problems, which I think are very serious problems with the first way of asking the symptoms by evaluating severity. That's very problematic in a statistical sense. And it leads to overdiagnosis of the disorder, which I'd like to show you. <coughs> this is much better. Why? Well, this is the distribution of those ratings, you can see the ratings at the bottom. 
uh, <coughs> rating of zero for the SNAP rating scale or the severity of the symptom are of one, two, or three, not at all, zero, just a little, pretty much, or very much. And this is the distribution and the population of the SNAP rating scale. And what shape is that? Well, it's not normal. It's an exponential distribution. How many people look at the, the norms for most any rating scale of this sort? The ADHD rating scales, the SNAP rating scale, any rating scale. What is the typical cutoff stated as? It's usually stated as a T-score, which essentially is the same thing as a standard score or a Z-score. And what's the basic assumption of those? Normal distribution. How in the world can you use cutoffs based on a normal distribution when you don't have a normal distribution? Well, if you read the appendices of many manuals, you'll see the contortions that they use to explain how to use T-scores, which means they can't use them really and they have to go through some restrictions. In fact, what you should not do is use T-scores or Z-scores with an exponential distribution or a negative binomial distribution, which is shown here for the SNAP rating scale. <coughs> What's the solution? Well, if you use the other rating scale, this, this, this rating scale that I call the SWAN rating scale, I lost my tracker, then you take all these scores that are bunched up at zero, where you ask, a child, you ask about a child, does this child have a problem? And if the answer is no, does that mean there's no variance, that everybody has the same score? Or does that mean some people pay better attention than others? Or whatever the symptom might be. Well, you can take that variance and spread it out and make a normal distribution for the same content, but now you have a normal distribution that actually is a much, has much better psychometric properties for assessing the symptoms of the disorder. So I maintain that the symptoms of ADHD are not psychopathology. They are behaviors that are represented in the population by a normal distribution. But when you interview or ask about them on typical rating scales, on the SNAP, for example, and I can criticize the SNAP because the S in the SNAP stands for Swanson. That's a terrible rating scale. <laughs> Absolutely awful. I didn't know it long ago when you were a child. <laughs> I hated to hear that. I didn't think about myself that way, but uh, it's probably so. Uh, that the SNAP rating scale has the distributional characteristics that are pretty bad. And the SWAN, which stands for the strengths and weaknesses of ADHD symptoms and normal behavior, that's the name of it, gives you a normal distribution. And those properties are much better for making diagnosis. So instead of you have average, below average, or above average, instead of not at all, and then the severity of the symptom considered to be psychopathology when it really is not, in my opinion. And this is a, a recent study, very good study, <coughs> showing the distribution in a, a German population of the SWAN rating scale relatively normal, in distribution of typical rating scales assumed to be normal but really not. This is the child behavior checklist, but the same thing holds for the SNAP rating scale or the Connors rating scale or the Vanderbilt ADHD rating scale or any of the other scales that I've found, except for one today. I uh, uh, was very embarrassed. I thought I invented this, but I found a 1954 book. And the ratings in the 1954 book were like the Swan rating scale. I was very upset. <laughs> Things seemed to be not discoverable because they were discovered before. Was it McCla uh, McCla McFarlane. McFarlane and two other authors published in 1954 have a fantastic assessment of normal behavior that they designed so they could then evaluate abnormal behavior with respect to what is normal. And that's what the Swan rating scale does. Old ideas brought back in a new uh, guise. But the normal distribution in the German population and the negative binomial or non-normal distribution